Hello, I just had a real estate education on multifamily investing. I'm Ria and here are my eight lessons learned from Radcliffe on choosing a property. Lesson one, residential multifamily. It could be a duplex, triplex or quadplex. The advantages of the smaller multifamily is the financing, which is fantastic. And if you live there, you can get up to 97% of the loan which you cannot do in a commercial multifamily. And if you're a vet, you can get 100% financing, which is terrific. The negative, the downside is that you are governed by comparable sales. Now, the other types of property are garden style properties, and we've seen those where we just go up with just a few st steps of stairs. There's al also multi-story, which have elevators and there's townhouses, and anything five units and over is considered commercial property, commercial multifamily. Lesson two, there's also different asset classes. There's class A. The class A is the nicest, the newest, the most amenities, and they're brand new stuff that's been built recently. And there's class B, C, and D. There's a quite bit of subjectivity with B and C. It depends on the number of amenities, the unit's architecture, if the ceilings are too low and the rooms too small and the windows are big, they are called functional obsolescent. And that will help you determine if it's class B and C. Third, the age will also determine the class type. The areas have classes as well, class A, B, and C, and D. He recommends staying out of class D. He asks people that are seasoned investors, if you go back and tell yourself out there, what might you do differently? And the answer, 90% of the time, guess what? Go bigger or faster. Lesson four, what price range based on what you think you're going to get finance? In commercial, they're looking at you, but not to the degree that they're looking when you're buying residential multifamily. They're also going to look at the property and its ability to service the debt. They want to know that the property can pay for the mortgage payments. Lesson five, you got to decide on what levels of renovation you're uh, willing to deal with. For anything less than 6,000 is called minor and for anything above it is called uh, major. Lesson six, what's the occupancy? If the occupancy is 90% and higher, it's stabilized. If it's under 90%, it's not stabilized, and that will determine the debt you can get. Lesson seven, the other thing you need to look at is the vacancy in the market. For example, Rycliffe bought an asset in Louisiana. It was 70% occupied. The market was 95% occupied. Property, 70% occupied, market, 95% occupied. So that is a clue and that was a home run for them. Lesson eight, is the property distressed? Is the owner struggling for some reason and why? They don't have the money for the management? What's the issue? Is the property units too small? What's the bedroom count? What's the demographic in the area? What's going on with the property? So we need to figure out all of those. So those are my eight lessons learned on choosing a property. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can also download a free section of my book. It's my first investment property. So you don't make the same mistakes that I made. Take care and God bless.